All right, so inshallah, uh, next we'll have uh, our uh, beautiful guest, Sheikh uh, Abdul Razak. Uh, Sheikh Abdul Razak, he came with us from Vancouver. Uh, coming here was a story for him with the ferry cancellations and stuff, but he has always made it uh, himself as well as um, his daughter. Uh, mashallah, uh, Sheikh Abdul Razak, I, last time when he came with us, I didn't get a chance to sit with him. Uh, this time he probably wants to get rid of me because he's driving me around myself and my son and uh, I've learned so much you know about him about his life about how he has pursued knowledge um, so without further ado inshallah this is a little bit about uh, about him as a bio but without further ado inshallah I would like to welcome to the, welcome to the stage Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi ta'ala wa barakatuh. Alhamdulillah, hamdan kathira. Wa salatu wa salamu ala man arsalahu allahu azza wa jalla shahidan wa mubashiran wa nadhira. Rabbi shrah li sadri wa yassir li amri wa ahlul uqdatan min lisani yafqahu qawli. Dear respected brothers and sisters, since we are talking about the id Islamic education, I would like to give you some examples from the Quran which involves the learning and teaching process. And I have selected Surah Al Kahf and precisely the story of Musa and Al Khadir. And subhanAllah, in this story, there are all the etiquettes of the giver of knowledge and the seeker of knowledge. But one thing that attracted my attention is that when you start this surah, Allah Azza wa Jal starts by telling you, وَإِذْ قَالَ مُوسَىٰ لِفَتَاهُ لَا أَبَرَحُ حَتَّىٰ أَبَلُغَ مَجْمَعَ الْبَحْرَيْنِ أَوْ أَمْضِيَ حُقُبًا And when Musa told his servant, his young man, I will not stop until I reach that place, even if I have to walk for ages. Now the question is, why the story starts here? Because this is not the starting of the story. If you are not the beginning of the story, you have to go back to the hadith of the Prophet وسلم, namely in the Sihah, like Bukhari and Muslim. And Nabi وسلم, narrates the story by telling us that Musa stood in a sermon and gave a beautiful sermon. And when he finished, Banu Israel asked him, who is the most knowledgeable man from among people? Now, thinking that he is the prophet of the time, he should be the, the most knowledgeable man, right? And he said, I am the most knowledgeable man. So Allah Ta'ala wanted to teach him and teach us also. And he told him, there is actually a man who has a knowledge that you don't have. And Musa, because he was humble and he was honest, he said, oh Allah, I want to go and seek knowledge from him. So Allah told him, okay then, you have to go where the two seas meet. And when, you, when you, your fish will go back to life, that's where you're going to meet him. And now you go back to the Quran and you read that Musa went with his young man. Now, why this young man is mentioned? And why Musa told him, I will not stop until I reach that place to seek knowledge. Subhanallah, there's a lesson here. Musa, who is a prophet from Uli Al-Azm, telling a young man that he will seek knowledge. Not only is showing him by going there and taking him, but he is telling him. Because sometimes when you, sometimes you, when you present yourself as a model for teaching others, maybe they didn't, they didn't get it. But here Musa is saying it explicitly. I, Musa, the prophet of this time, I'm going to seek knowledge. And even if it takes me ages to reach that man, I will go there. And he's telling his young man. Imagine this young man. He will be like starving and to, to, to get more and more knowledge. This is Musa, how about me? I should do even more. So this is the first lesson. Now, the other thing is Sometimes you have to take a journey to seek knowledge. Look at Bukhari uh, عنه, It took him 17 years to, to write the Muhtasar of the Sahih. 17 years. He went all throughout the land seeking Hadith. Now, if we move forward with another example of the 
giver of knowledge and the seeker of knowledge, I want to move to Al Khadr and Musa alayhim as salam. Both of them. Now, Musa is the learner. And subhanAllah, when you, when you look at, at the story, because uh, Musa w was humble, like when he met Al Khadr, he told him, Hal I want to follow you. So that you teach me, not all, some of what you have learned. Subhanallah. This is interesting. So it tells us how Musa wanted to, to learn from Khadr alayhi salam. Now the other thing that we learn is that when you learn, when you seek knowledge, you can seek knowledge from somebody who knows more than you or somebody who knows as much as you know, or maybe somebody who knows less than you. Maybe he has a knowledge you don't have. And that's exactly what's happening here. Because everybody knows the status of Musa. He is from Ulil Azim, from the mighty Rasul. وَكَلَّمَ اللَّهُ مُوسَى تَكْلِيمًا Allah spoke to him. وَاسْطَنَعْتُكَ لِنَفْسِي وَلُتُسْنَعَ عَلَىٰ عَيْنِي Allah selected him, subhanAllah. And still, he wanted to learn from Al-Khadr because Khadr has a different knowledge. And when you read the hadith in Sahih Muslim, Al-Khadr told Musa, Oh Musa, you have a knowledge from Allah that I don't have. And I have a knowledge from Allah that you don't have. Subhanallah. This is also called Riwayatul Akabiri Anil Asagir in Hadith. In, in Ilm al Hadith, sometimes you say that the narration of those who are higher in status or age from those who are less or lower in status and age. Like for example, a Sahabi narrating from a Tabi'i. Because it might happen that a Sahabi who saw the Prophet's lesson but never heard the Hadith, he heard it the first time from a Tabi'i who never saw the Prophet, but this Tabi'i had a chance to hear it from another Sahabi. So when the Sahabi narrates the Hadith, he said, I heard it from this young man, this Tabi'i. This is how much honest they were. Even like when you look in the Quran, like the story of Musa, uh, of the story of Sulaiman salam with the hoopoo, the bird, al hudhud. When hudhud came to Sulaiman, he said, "Ahatu bima lam I know something you don't know. I found some people they worship other than Allah Azza wa Jal, and because of this information, a whole nation of Saba will embrace Islam. Subhanallah. So this is riwayatul akabir an al-asaghir. The other thing that we learn is that see when Musa and Khadr, the place where they meet is called Majma'ul Bahrain, the meeting of the two seas. Of course, this is called in Arabic Sigatu Taghlib, because normally it's the sea with the river. Just like Allah Ta'ala says in Surah Furqan, it is he who merged the two seas. This one is salty, the other one is sweet and drinkable. What does it tell you? You know in Arabic there is a proverb that says, You might find in a river what you don't find in the sea. Although the sea is bigger and has more species, but you might find a fish in the river that doesn't exist in the sea. And that's exactly what happened between Musa and Al-Khadr. Al-Khadr has a knowledge that is from Al-Ghayb that Allah has given him, which Musa didn't have, subhanAllah. And, and the sea is very, uh, it has a connotation. Because when you say Al-Bahr, Al-Bahr, you know, in, in Arabic, usually when you want to present somebody who has very deep knowledge, you say Bahr ilm. He's a sea or ocean of knowledge. And subhanAllah, from a linguistic point of view, when you take Bahr, has Bahra. If you flip it, you get habr. And al habr, it means deep knowledge, a scholar with deep knowledge, like habr al ummah ibn Abbas. He had deep knowledge. That's why we can say al ahbar, al rabbaniyuna wal ahbar. Which is more interesting is if you flip it around one more time, the same three letters, you get hibr. And al hibr is al midad, is the ink with which you write. No wonder that in Surah Al-Kahf, the same Surah, in the end, Allah Ta'ala says, قُلْ لَوْ كَانَ الْبَحْرُ مِدَادًا لِكَلِمَاتِ رَبِّي لَنَا فِيلَ الْبَحْرُ قَبْلَ أَن تَنْفَذَ كَلِمَاتُ رَبِّي وَلَوْ جِئْنَا بِمِثْلِهِ مَدَدَ If the sea was to be ink for the words of Allah, then the sea will run out before the words of Allah run out. Even if you bring another sea as a support. Subhanallah. Another thing is that مَجْمَعَ الْبَحْرَيْنِ 
You know when Musa met al Khidr, the place where they're gonna meet, the fish will come back to life and it will take its way in the sea. What does it mean? The fish go back to the sea. And the sea, we said it always usually represents the ilm. It means return back into Allah Azza wa Jal. And that's why Allah Ta'ala ataba alayhi and the yarudda ilma ilayhi. Obviously Allah Ta'ala a'lam. Subhanallah. In the same story with Khadr and, and, Mus and Musa, we learn a lot of things, like sab, sorry, a sabr. Huh? Sabr from both sides. The giver of knowledge has to be patient, as well as the seeker of knowledge. Satajiduni insha'Allahu sabira. The other thing which is very important in this regard is Allah Ta'ala, when He described Khadr, He said, Abdam min ibadina. It's a servant from us whom we have given mercy from us and then knowledge. And he mentioned mercy before knowledge. This is very important. In terms of giving knowledge, you have to have mercy. You have to, have, to be merciful with your student. As a parent, as an educator, you have to be merciful. Mercy comes before knowledge. And that's why Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, even though Allah Ta'ala told him, وَعَلَّمَكَ مَا لَمْ تَكُنْ تَعْلَمْ Allah has taught you, has given you knowledge that you didn't have. But before that, he told him, وَمَا أَرْسَلْنَاكَ إِلَّا رَحْمَةً لِلْعَالَمِينَ We haven't sent you except as a mercy to the universe. And in another verse, بِالْمُؤْمِنِينَ رَأُوفُ الرَّحِيمِ That Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is with the believers. He's Ra'uf, he's, he's, he's compassionate and he is merciful subhanallah now I want to give you another example from the like giver of knowledge seeker of knowledge but it, it's a different perspective Allah Azza wa Jalla and the Malaika وَإِذْ قَالَ رَبُّكَ لِلْمَلَائِكَةِ إِنِّي جَاعِلٌ فِي الْأَرْضِ خَلِيفَةِ Allah Azza wa Jal telling the angels I will put on earth a representative and the angels replied, أَتَجْعَلُ فِيهَا مَنْ يُفْسِدُ فِيهَا وَيَسْفِكُ الدِّمَاءَ وَنَحْنُ نُسَبِّحُ بِحَمْدِكَ وَنُقَدِّسُ لَكَ How come you will put therein a creation that will shed blood and cause corruption? Where we angels, we glorify you. So now the angels, they didn't object, but they are like curious, they are asking. Now, I want to open uh, like a parenthesis here. Like many people, they ask, how did the angel know? that this human being will shed blood and cause corruption. And in this regard, many people, they start speculating. But you have to know that the angels, they don't know the ghayb. Nobody knows the ghayb. Allah Ta'ala allamu al -ghayb. Allah knows the ghayb. So how did they know? You know that the answer is very simple. In the same page, just a few verses later, when Allah Ta'ala told, told the angels, uh, tell me about those names, أَنْبِئُونِي بِأَسْمَائِهِمْ What did they reply? سُبْحَانَكَ لَا عِلْمَ لَنَا إِلَّا مَا عَلَّمْتَنَا Glory to you. We have no knowledge except for the knowledge that you have given us. So all the knowledge that the angels have is from Allah Azza wa Jal. Allah told them. Because sometimes in the course of uh, the speech in the Quran, it's, it's very common. Either story or dialogue. Not all the full dialogue is given. Sometimes part of it here, part of it there, you, in different verses. SubhanAllah, sometimes it's the, the hadith that tells you the full speech. Allah told him that this creation will, will shed blood. And the proof that Allah didn't only t t told the angels that this creation will be a representative is that when you look at Surah Al-Hijr, you'll find something else. It's very interesting. وَإِذْ قَالَ رَبُّكَ لِلْمَلَائِكَةِ إِنِّي خَالِقٌ بَشَرًا مِّنْ صَلْصَالٍ مِّنْ حَمَئٍ مَّسْنُونٍ فَإِذَا سَوَّيْتُهُ وَنَفَخْتُ فِيهِ مِنْ رُوحِي فَقَعُوا لَهُ سَاجِدِينَ And when your Lord told the angels, I will create a bashar, a human being, from a fermented clay, tingling heart. So when I fashioned him and shaped him, then prostrate to him. What does it tell you? It gives you a different perspective that the angels, when they were told that this human being would be a representative, he was created from clay, and then they will have to prostrate him, to him. And most importantly, that Allah will shape him and will blow from his ruh in this creation. This is all the information that they knew. So Allah, that's why 
the angel said, Subhanaka la ilmanana. Illa ma alamtan. Innaka anta al-alim al-hakim. You are the all-knowing, the most wise. And by the way, the first name of Allah that came in Surah Al-Baqarah is al-alim. Subhanallah. The first name of Allah Azza wa Jal. Now, if we move forward and I want to end with this. You know, there are other examples. I want to skip the example of Allah Ta'ala teaching the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam because Mashaykh, Mashallah, they spoke about it. When uh, Allah Ta'ala tells uh, Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Iqra, for example, read. Or when he tells him, وَلَوْ كُنْتَ فَضًّا غَلِيظَ الْقَلْبِ لَنْ فَضُّوا مِنْ حَوْلِكْ فَعْفُ عَنْهُمْ وَاسْتَغْفِرْ لَهُمْ وَشَاوِرْهُمْ فِي الْأَمْرِ Allah is telling the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and through him to us, if you were harsh, with a hard heart, then they will leave you. So forgive them and pardon them and consult with them and ask for their opinions. SubhanAllah. So Allah teaching the Prophet and teaching us through him. But what I found amazing and SubhanAllah is mind blowing. When you think about it deeply, this idea of giver of knowledge, seeker of knowledge, is Allah Azza wa Jal, the most high, teaching us this weak being. وَخُلِقَ الْإِنسَانُ ضَعِيفًا Man was created weak and he is ظَلُومَ and جَهُولِ He is ignorant and transgressor. But still Allah Ta'ala says عَلَّمَ الْإِنسَانَ مَا لَمْ يَعْلَمْ Allah taught man that which he didn't know. خَلَقَ الْإِنسَانُ عَلَّمَهُ الْبَيَانِ He created man and he taught him eloquent speech. Not only that, Allah Ta'ala says in another, because before you get, you get knowledge, you, have, you need to have the means to seek knowledge. Because there is, a, there is an input and output. Allah tells you, وَهُوَ الَّذِي أَخْرَجَكُمْ مِنْ بُطُونِ أُمَّهَاتِكُمْ لَا تَعْلَمُونَ شَيْئًا وَجَعَلَ لَكُمُ السَّمْعَ وَالْأَبْصَارَ وَالْأَفْئِدَةِ It is He, Allah Azza wa Jal. He calls you to come from the wombs of your mother with no knowledge. But he gave you the eyes and the ears and the hearts so that you can seek and learn, subhanAllah. So bottom line, the teaching and learning process is all throughout the Qur'an, subhanAllah. And that's why Allah Ta'ala, in the Qur'an, he says, وَاتَّقُوا اللَّهِ وَيُعَلِّمُكُمُ اللَّهِ just have piety and Allah will give you knowledge. And that's why it's very important because in general, there's many types of knowledge. You have a knowledge that is bad. That's why Allah says in Surah Al-Baqarah, They seek a knowledge that harms them and doesn't benefit them at all. So this is, forget it. Forget it. But there's a knowledge that is permissible. Like Allah Ta'ala says, when, when He says, أَفَلَا يَنظُرُونَ إِلَى الْإِبِلِ كَيْفَ خُلِقَتْ Do they do not look at the camels, how they are created? SubhanAllah, biology. وَإِلَى السَّمَاءِ كَيْفَ رُفِعَتْ How we raise the skies, astronomy. وَإِلَى الْأَرْضِ كَيْفَ سُطِحَتْ وَإِلَى الْجِبَالِ كَيْفَ نُصِبَتْ How the, the earth was made flat and the mountains, that you have geology, right? Even history and geography is there. When Allah Ta'ala tells you, قُلْ سِيرُوا فِي الْأَرْضِ فَانْظُرُوا كَيْفَ كَانَ عَاقِبَةُ الَّذِينَ مِنْ قَبْلِكُمْ Walk in the land and look how was the destiny and the end of the nations and civilizations before you. This is all fine. But don't be like those whom Allah Azza wa Jal says about them. يَعْلَمُونَ ظَاهِرًا مِّنَ الْحَيَاةِ الدُّنْيَا وَهُمْ عَنِ الْآخِرَةِ هُمْ مَعَفِلُونَ They know apparent, few apparent things from this life, inferior life. But when it comes to the hereafter, they are completely heedless. That's why there's a, this is a knowledge that you have to learn. That's why Allah Ta'ala uses in the Qur'an the imperative tense. Fil amr. Fa'lam annahu la ilaha illallah. Know that there is no God but Allah Ta'ala. SubhanAllah. I'lamu anna Allah shadeedu al-iqaf wa anna Allah ghafoor rahim Know that Allah is severe in punishment but He's merciful and forgiving. And then, I'lamu anna ma al-hayatu al-dunya la'ibun wa lahu ila akhir al-ayah. Know the reality of this life. It's just amusement and increasing in money and children. Don't let dunya take you away from your goal. Learn that which is beneficial that will save you in the hereafter. 
اللهم علمنا ما ينفعنا وانفعنا بما علمتنا سبحانك لا علم لنا إلا ما علمتنا إنك أنت العليم الحكيم سبحان ربك رب العزة عما يصفون وسلام على المرسلين والحمد لله رب العالمين